Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from the Dice Tower. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Mosaic, a story of civilization. Game designed by Glenn Drover and published by Forbidden Games. Let's get to it. Mosaic is a civilization building game for two to six players, with a solo mode that we won't cover in this video. Across the game, players will expand their empires, gaining trade routes and resources, deploy armies, build buildings and wonders, expand their population and technology, and reach achievements and golden ages, all in the aim of scoring the most victory points for their empires. The player with the most points after the empires are scored three times will win the game. In this video, we'll be showing you components from the Deluxe Colossus Edition of the game. To set up, first set up the four decks. The Herobotus decks are used in the solo mode and are left in the box. Set aside the one card from each deck labelled Empire Scoring. Then take the Technology deck and separate it into two sub-decks, Starter and Non-Starter, based on the S in the top left corner. Shuffle the starters and then deal each player a hand of five before recombining the starters and non-starters to a single deck. Now shuffle all four decks. You'll use the full build and technology decks, but use only a subset of the other two. 10 in a two or three player game, 12 in a four or five player game, or 14 in a six player game. Shuffle the Empire scoring card into the bottom half of each of the build, tax and tariff and population decks and into the bottom third of the technology deck for a 4-6 to six player game, or the middle third for a 2-3 to three player game. Place each deck onto the board and deal the required number of cards face up. Next set up the map. There are 7 different coloured regions and you'll use them all at 4 or more players. You won't use Hispania in a 3 player game and you'll use neither Hispania nor Gaul in a 2 player game. Shuffle all the brown cache tiles and put one face down on each cache hex. Place a fish token into each port hex showing a ship. And then shuffle all of the grey trade goods tokens except for the one with the question mark and put one face down into every single remaining hex which is marked out on the board. Any hex with part or all of its six sides marked on the board is valid for placement. Then flip over all tiles and return all tiles showing one of these X's to the box. This randomly distributes the trade goods across the lands. Beside the board lay out the nine wonder tiles and their pieces, the nine golden age tiles, nine of the 15 civilization achievement tiles chosen at random and the six government tiles on the unflipped side. Now set up for each player. Each player takes a player board, the five starter technology cards they drew earlier, and all pieces in player colour. Find your ten production cubes and put production at zero in each of these five tracks. Add five population to your storage area. Choose a first player. In reverse turn order, players choose one leader from all of those available. Gain starting resources and production according to that leader. And take note of your other bonus ability that's available to you through the game. Now all players will draft the starting technologies they were given. Choose one of the five cards in your hand and hand the rest of the cards clockwise. You'll receive cards from your neighbour, look at them and keep choosing cards one at a time. In turn order, players place a starting city into any valid hex on the board, taking the token that it's placed on, resolving it in the normal way, then resolving any leader effects that resolve at the start of the game, and then resolving any starting technology cards that they're able to play. These resolve in the same way as their corresponding game actions, so we'll learn about that later. You can play any or all of your starter technologies as long as you're able, and usually you'll play at least three or four. Once all players have done this, you're ready to play. Mosaic is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. 
On each turn, you will take a single action and may take one or more free actions. There are eight different main actions you can take. You can work to produce a resource. You can do population to increase the population of your empire. You can build a new town, city or project, in most cases putting the matching piece on the board. You can make a wonder, taking the matching tile and adding its piece to the board. You can develop a technology. You can tax or tariff to earn money from your empire. You can do military to hire or move military units around the world. Or you can do government to take one of the government tiles for some ongoing benefits. As free actions, you can play a technology card that you've previously gained and gain any golden age or achievement tiles whose criteria you meet. After taking your one main action and any number of free actions, play passes to the next player. So now let's look at each action in detail. The first action is work, which you'll use to produce the game's three main resources, stone, food and ideas. When you work, you choose one of those three resources and then gain an amount equal to your production plus your population. Here, blue could gain eight stone or six food or 11 ideas. Note that you can't produce money with the work action. This will be done with the tax or tariff action. Money is useful because you can spend two money in place of any one other resource when spending it on an action. Second is population. Choose one of the two face-up population cards, pay the amount of food shown at the bottom of the card, gain that much population to your storage area, then discard the card you played, and redraw from the deck. These cards range between one and four population. Once all cards are gone, this action is always 15 food for two population. The third action is build. Choose one of the five cards in the build display, pay its cost, and then take the card and build it. Anytime you gain a build card, or indeed any card other than population, you resolve the text effect printed at the bottom and then add it to your display of cards, overlapping anything that's not an ongoing effect. All else that needs to remain visible are these icons. There are nine different icons in the game and these are called the Pillars of Civilization. There are three different types of cards you can build, towns, cities, and projects. Building a town is free, simply take the card and add it to your tableau. Farm towns gain you food, manufactory towns give you money and a way of earning victory points through trading. Either way, you now take the matching type of farm piece and place it on the board in any hex that is adjacent to one of your existing cities excluding a port hex. If there was a token on that hex, you now take it. For a grey trade goods token, add it to one of your trade goods slots. If you already have one of that trade goods, stack it on top. What you want is unique goods. If the trade good is the same as one of the main resources, then you also advance your production based on the number. And if the tile is one of the brown cage tiles, then you gain the matching resources to your storage before discarding it. Building a city costs four stone and two population. And remember that stone, ideas and food can be replaced with coins, but population cannot. There are many different types of cities, but functionally they all behave the same way, except for the port cities. When you build a non-port city, resolve its effect which will include adding five coins to the holding area of the tax and tariff action for someone else to take. Then take a city piece in your color and place it in any non-port hex on the board. Any tiles you collect are resolved the same way as for a town. If you build a port city, the effect is always that you gain 10 coins, the holding area gains 10 coins, and you place one of your special port city pieces, which shows the boats and the coastline, into a port hex anywhere on the board, taking the fish token, which grants you three food production. 
The third type of card you can build is a project, and this costs 5 stone and 5 ideas. This adds nothing to the board. Instead, you'll gain one point at the end of the game for each of the matching icon that you have collected on cards, and there's one project for each of the nine icons. Whatever it is you build, you now refill from the top of the deck. This action becomes unavailable once no cards remain. The fourth action is Wonders, and this allows you to construct one of the game's nine wonder tiles. These are one of the most expensive things you can build, but also one of the most profitable for points. Your first wonder will cost you 20 stone and 5 food. Your second costs 25 stone and 10 food. Your third costs 30 stone and 15 food, and so on, adding 5 stone and 5 food for each subsequent wonder you construct. Choose any one of the tiles, adding it to your collection, and then take the matching piece and put it into an available hex in a region where you have at least one city. Blue, for example, could not place in Hispania. Two of the specific wonders must be placed in port hexes, all others must be placed in non-port hexes. Resolve any trade good or cash tokens in the usual way. The fifth action is technology, and to do this, simply pay five ideas, choose any one of the face-up technology cards, and add it to your hand. Then replenish from the top of the deck. Once the deck and cards are gone, this action can no longer be taken. As a free action on your turn, you can play a technology card from your hand, playing it face up, resolving its effect, and then adding it below the others as before, so that you can see the icons. Keep the card separate if it has an ongoing ability you need to keep track of. There are some technology cards which have a prerequisite to play, and that's any icons shown up here in this linen box in the top right. Right now, I would not be allowed to play this card because I don't have the necessary government icon. But later in the game, after having played this card, for example, I would now have the required icons to play this one. In most cases, you'll play technology cards as soon as you're able to, but there are some which have timing effects where you'll want to hang on to them until the right moment. The sixth action is Tax and Tariff, and this is one of the major ways to gain money. Choose one of the two face-up cards, and it will either be Tariff or Tax. And then gain the money shown before adding the card to your collection. Tax cards will always give you some amount of money per population, some amount for each government icon you have, and the amount on your tax production. Tariff cards will always give you some amount for each unique trade good you have, some amount for each city that you've founded, and some amount for your tariff production. Both tax and tariff cards will give you some amount of unrest, which will be worth negative victory points at the end of the game. You gain all money from the holding area, which was put there when players built cities, and replenish from the top of the deck. Once all the cards are gone, you can choose either tax or tariff. The formulas for how much money you receive are printed down the bottom, you still get what's in the holding area, and you get no unrest. The seventh action is military, allowing you to both recruit and move military units. When recruiting, you can recruit a maximum of two military units at a cost of five coins each. These units can be infantry or cavalry, or a mix of both, and unless you have some other card that combos with them, there's really no difference between the two. You could also recruit a siege engine if you have the siege engine technology. Each unit you recruit is placed in a region where you have at least one city. These units are not placed in any hex in particular, and they don't pick up these tokens. The units belong to the region as a whole, and you can freely shuffle around their position if someone wants to place a building where they were. When you move units, you can move each of your military units on the board a maximum of once, at a cost of one coin per movement. Each move allows one unit to move to an adjacent region. You can move units together or separately, but each of them costs a separate coin. For military movement, these regions are considered adjacent. Your buildings and military contribute towards your control of a region when the time comes for empire scoring, and so this is why you'll want to construct them and move them to strategic locations. 
The eighth and final action is government. Choose one of the six government tiles yet to be taken by any other player. Make sure you meet the prerequisite icons in the bottom left corner and then pay the idea cost in the bottom right. Then take the tile and add it to your collection on the unflipped side. While you have this tile, you may have an ongoing benefit and you will have a personal objective which you can score during Empire Scoring. You also have a once-off free action which you can take on your turn, flipping the tile over, to sweep out any one offer of cards, put them on the bottom of their deck and replenish before your action. You may only have one government at a time. If you wish to change your government, return your tile on its unflipped side to the main display and then purchase your new tile in the same way as your first. The final action you can take on your turn is a free action to gain a golden age or achievement tile from the display. You can gain multiple tiles on the same turn if you meet multiple prerequisites and each of these tiles is worth six points. All Golden Age tiles can be taken when you reach a prerequisite of six of a specific icon. And when you gain this, in addition to the points, you'll gain a bonus printed on the tile. The achievements are based on a variety of other prerequisites, such as trade goods, types of units, cities or production, and these are only worth the points. When an Empire Scoring card is revealed, finish the current turn and then resolve Empire Scoring. Separately resolve which player has the most and second most influence in each separate region on the board. Each city, including port cities, and each wonder owned by a player score two influence. Each town and each military unit scores one influence. Suppose here that Red is the owner of the Colosseum. Red has two, four, six, seven, eight, nine influence. Yellow has two, three, and blue has one, two, three, four. Red is the winner and now scores one point per city and wonder owned by anyone in that region, plus three points. So here, one, two, three, four, plus three is seven points. The second place player gains two points. Mark these scores out on the score track. If two or more players are tied for the most influence in a region, then they gain the full points and anyone else gains nothing. And where there's a tie for second place, all those tied players get nothing. Technology cards may have some other effects on influence. And siege engines, if present, cancel the influence from cities. Then any player with a government scores for that government's empire scoring bonus. Then discard the Empire Scoring card and replenish it once again. The game end is triggered when a third Empire Scoring card is drawn and resolved. It can also be triggered when two out of these three rows of tiles, the Golden Ages, Achievements and Wonders, are gone. If it's triggered by this second means, perform Empire Scoring immediately, even though no card was drawn. After that Empire Scoring, continue playing until all players have had the same number of turns, and then play one more round. There can never be more than three rounds of Empire Scoring in the game, so if you trigger a fourth during this phase, ignore it. Finally, if the Scribe's in the game, you'll resolve your end of game bonus, and then the game is over, and players will total up their final scores. Gain two points for each of your cities, and one point for each of your towns on the map. For each of your wonders, score victory points based on the objective printed on the wonder. Gain six points for each achievement and golden age tile. Each of your manufacturing towns will have three trade goods printed next to it, and if you have all three of those trade goods, gain five points for that town. If you have towns with duplicate trade goods, you can achieve them with only one of each tile. Score the points printed in the bottom left of any cards that you've gained. Some of these will just be straight victory points, some of them will be points based on an objective. Here, for example, points for every government icon on your cards. Your leader card may also come with icons or endgame points. Finally, total up your net unrest, which is equal to all the unrest on tax and tariff cards you've gained, minus any negative unrest on cards. 
lose one point for each unrest, and you don't gain points if your net unrest is less than zero. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, whoever has the most wonders wins, and if still tied, whoever has the most leftover money. If still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Mosaic, a story of civilization. If you find this video useful, please help us by hitting that like button and subscribe to the Dice Tower if you haven't already done so. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please leave that in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.